going to get married. You can have how many wife you can have? One, two, three, or four. 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 Uh, breaks the masjid. Hassan Phillips has two wives. He's 32 and works part-time at a Brixton mosque. He converted to Islam when he was 16. A lot of people, you know, when they find out that, oh, Hassan, you've got more than one wife, like, that must have been your game plan from the beginning, you know. Jamaicans, they love women, apparently. Not something you come into Islam thinking about marriage, especially when you've come from a Christian background where, you know, you, it's just girlfriends, you know. And polygamy, <laughs> that was not, that was the last thing on my mind. I, in fact, I used to be scared of it. In most Muslim polygamous marriages, the wives live in separate houses with their own children. Tonight, Hassan is on his way to stay with his wife Nabila in North London. Nabila came from Malaysia to do a PhD in engineering at Cambridge. She met Hassan through a Muslim matrimonial website and gave up her studies to marry him and have his children, Safian and Saleh. I was looking for somebody who's been married or who's already in a marriage. Um, so, because I was um, married before that and I've um, Having gone through one divorce, you kind of know what you wanted in marriage. So, um, so I wanted somebody who already knows how to be a husband. That means that um, somebody who's already a husband <laughs> is a good candidate. Yeah. I don't really support brothers who have this mentality. No, she's got to be pure. And Chay's never been touched. She's never seen daylight. And then he's, you know, been around the block. And you think, well, come on, bruv. Why she? When Nabila and Hassan married, she became the second wife, a co-wife in his polygamous marriage. I met um, with my co-wife before marriage and we had tea and all that and so um, so she was okay with that so alhamdulillah. Um, and after marriage um, our relationship starts developing slowly and slowly. I really enjoyed um, being in a polygamy relationship. Um, if people can see, you know, what the greater benefit is, um, it's not we are not we are not stupid who are forced to be in this kind of relationship. Are you going to move that to the top? Oh, you want that to be on the top? I want it to be somewhere that. Nabila works from home, designing and running the website for the family's business, selling Arabic perfumes and clothing. I've got some bits and pieces. This is some uh, some of our orders. No, it's, it's a small family business, but it works. We're not, you know, benefit based. We 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 have our own business, and we 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 live off whatever comes from our business. In line with Islamic custom, Nabila keeps all her earnings in addition to money given to her by Hassan. The following day, after work at the mosque, Hassan makes his way to the South London home of his other wife, Sakina. One of the conditions of polygamy is that you have to be fair and just between your wives, not equal necessarily. If I buy her two roses, I don't have to go and buy her two roses as well. This is not, you know, what is a, how it's meant to be understood. The only thing that you have to be strictly equal in is the time that you spend with your wives. Each wife gets a sand for three nights at a time. Sakina works full time in the city. She's working late, so her sand collects their two children, Khalil and Zachariah from nursery. Okay. I was cool. Hassan was already married and divorced when he met Sakina at university. She is the first wife in his polygamous marriage. If you ask me to cook, I cook for myself. 
But if I try to cook five other people, they're gonna leave with an upset stomach. <laughs> now I'm not that bad a cook. The secret is, I'll tell you what, this is the secret. Don't let your wife know how good a cook you are because once you do that, you're gonna be the victim of your own success. You're gonna end up having to cook all the time when she realizes how good you really are. It's, it's wonderful being a father. I really enjoy it. I love it. It's like, you know, I can't get enough of being a father. Two, give me five. Good job, Marshall. I had um, a close relationship with my father. And then due to circumstances, that relationship, you know, um, severely broke down. So I kind of like know what it's like to not have that. Being raised in a single parent home made me realise how important it is to have both parents. You know, you think to yourself, I'm not going to do it like this when it's my turn. When I become the parent, I'm going to do it, you know, the way that I think it's going to be better because I experienced it this way and I didn't enjoy it. You're going to get married? You gonna have how many wife you gonna have? One, two, three or four? Four. Four. Hassan already has two wives, but has decided to marry a third. A woman he met through a friend. Hey, how you doing? You okay? Hey, you right? Fine, man. That's good. Yeah, no, no. That's family. Good. Good, good, good. Mashallah. Hey, um, I'm getting married this week, innit? Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Mashallah. Fourth one? No, no, not yet. Not yet, not yet. Number three, inshallah. So, Number three, yeah. Yeah, okay, so mashallah. you're invited, inshallah. It's going to be in Brixton. Achoo, Friday after Maghrib, if you can make it. Alhamdulillah. Good news, inshallah. good news. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah. Very good, very good to hear. So I'm just trying to this is the man. Is. Allah reward you, may Allah make it easy for you. May Allah give you better, inshallah. I mean, I mean, I mean. Inshallah. Inshallah. Hassan's wife to be is of Somali origin and is almost 10 years older than him. As her husband, he will pay her a dowry and give her gifts. There we go, look, we found a way that's nice, I like that. She works as a driving instructor and, like most Muslim women in Britain, doesn't currently wear a face veil. This is the new uh -huh. This is for eyes as well. This is for eyes as well. Uh -huh. This is normal makeup and this is for eyes. Okay. This is the new one. Okay. She's in her, her, her 40s. But it was deliberate. I, I wanted to mature a woman. But it was deliberate. I, I wanted to mature a woman because I, I appreciate the maturity. I appreciate a mature woman, and I, you know, just uh, from experience, I think you know that's what I need. You know, I'm, I'm looking for companionship. Hassan and his new wife have decided to keep the wedding very simple. How much is ten chicken? How many people can eat? Chicken. Uh, Depends how you cut it. Seven or eight of these chickens here, and then obviously he's gonna cut them all up for me, and then uh, with some bread, and I'll bring some dates and some sweets and some drinks. Fifty pounds, done and dusted. <laughs> the other wife's gonna come, by No, no, no. I don't. I don't think it'd be right to invite them. You know. Even though they accept of polygamy, you don't want to really rub it in their faces that I'm getting married and expect them to be happy and have a party about it. But it's just something, you know, alhamdulillah, you're doing it not for them, you're doing it, you know, f for, for the greater benefit of yourself and the person you're marrying. I've consulted them, I've spoke to them, they're aware of it, they're on board, they're supportive. But, you know, they don't need to be there at the table eating with me as well. <laughs> Hassan's new wife, Anab, is divorced with a teenage son, and as her only male relative, Hassan had to ask for his permission to marry his mother. Marriage covers a whole spectrum of things, and amongst them is your responsibility to your, your, your Muslim sisters, who have been married and divorced, who are you know, widows, who have children, who for whatever reason their marriages didn't work out, or whatever the case might be, they still need to be married and they're still good women and they still have great qualities and, and you know aspects of them that will please any man it's not that it's a newspaper you scratch it up and throw it away a, you know she, she's a human being she's a woman she's got needs just like a man's got needs and sometimes 
you'll find all what you're looking for in a woman that's already been married. So then what do you say? No, because she's been married before? That's discrimination. It's a week after Hassan's marriage to Anab, the third wife in his polygamous marriage. After a three-day honeymoon in Birmingham, Hassan spends his first three nights with Anab at her home in northwest London. Since marriage, Anab has started wearing the niqab, the face veil. Assalamualaikum. My wonderful wife, inshallah, and my bless her. Before you met um, Brother Hassan, was, was polygamy something you would ever thought about? You would see. Yeah. Right. Before, I think it was very hard to get married, be second wife or something. But after they made a lot of sisters, honestly, the marriage had a lot of problems. So, so I decided to brother has a wife, <laughs> maybe more responsible than when I hasn't got any. In an East London park, Hassan is getting all his families together. Although they live in separate houses, Hassan likes them all to meet up. Two older children from his very first marriage also join them. Okay, so I'm not really for this uh, everyone in the same house, you know. Ideally, maybe it sounds great, but it, it's a bit too much pressure. Sparks might fly over anything. Whose turn is it to cook? You don't really want that. You try to limit as much conflict as you can. It's all about conflict limitation. It's the first time his wife, Sakina and Nabila, will meet his new third wife, Anab. Uh -huh. Do you have any advice for her about uh, brother husband? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Well, <laughs> um, just don't know. <laughs> He's grumpy in the mornings, yeah. he snores at night, and all the rest. Who knows what else? Okay. Khadija, Saleh, Nabila, this is uh, Sister Anab. Mashallah, Tabarakallah. I'm gonna play some football, Khalid. I'm gonna play football. Yeah. You can't just really relax. You have to kind of be very careful. You know, don't joke too much with her without joking with her. If she doesn't understand the joke, she might take it negatively and think it's about her. You know, don't overshow your emotion to one of them. You know, this is the time when you really just have to be very strict. And very, so you can't really, you know, come and relax and then, you know, cuddle one of your wives and then your other wife sitting there thinking, who knows what? I think they've got some stories to tell you, like, I think they've got so much to tell you. They think that I haven't told you about the true me or I haven't represented myself properly or they wait till she finds out what you're like or I don't know what they want to tell you. <laughs> but, I, yeah, you'll find out, you'll find out. i got nothing to hide. Everything, everything that I've said, Everything that I told you is what they're going to tell you. You know, they, you have those uh, people and they have the, the stick with the plate on it and they go like that mm -hmm. and it spins. And then they get another one and it spins and they get another one and it spins. And then you got to go that one and make sure it keeps spinning. And then you get me. It's like keeping all of these plates spinning. <laughs> you cannot let one topple or fall off. Wednesday night and Hassan is on his way to one of his wives. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder, isn't it? And part of that is probably true because that period, that short period of being away, it makes, it builds our, you know, you do miss your wife, you just can't help it, you miss them. 